Welcome everyone for my uh, talk about interfacing sensor with Zephyr for IoT devices. Before getting into the topic, I would like to have a quick question uh, for everybody. So, how many of you already use Zephyr in one way or another? Probably uh, use it for uh, development, developing a uh, custom sam sample application or uh, something towards uh, Zephyr. Uh, so, how many of you already worked on Zephyr? Yeah, that's more than two thirds of a crowd. Thank you. So then, uh, let's get started. So, I am Dinesh Kumar K, an embedded software engineer at Linux. At Linux, we primarily focus on uh, embedded Linux as well as Zephyr Autos related developments for our customers and various custom hardware developments. So, uh, I myself uh, primarily work with uh, Zephyr in terms of uh, board support, drivers, and as well as to some extent for SOCs. And uh, we also uh, support our customers in terms of application development, let's say for uh, both uh, IoT devices or non-IoT devices, technically in uh, edge computing or uh, battery powered and other various cases. So I uh, also work with uh, embedded Linux development uh, in certain aspects, technically providing uh, software services for uh, uh, board support packages, uh, U-Boot, and uh, also we deliver the product solution uh, in the app store. Uh, I also uh, work with uh, OTA solution like uh, Rauk, uh, SW update uh, together with a uh, set of UA application in the back end which we have at Linux. So uh, I myself uh, live in down south part of uh, India uh, in Coimbatore. So uh, let's get started with uh, our actual flow of our talk today. So uh, before getting into the uh, actual talk about how sensor subsystem are uh, laid in a uh, uh, Zephyr Autos and those talk, uh, we briefly go through uh, what a sensor is, how it can be classified uh, and so on with some uh, basic infos, not much of it. Uh, then we'll see uh, how uh, uh, sensor subsystem in uh, Zephyr Autos is and see how it interfaces with the application and so on. Uh, then we'll see uh, how to add a new sensor in uh, Zephyr. Probably you might be interested with this uh, particular topic because you might already uh, uh, have a sensor with you and then you would like to add this affair, uh, add this sensor uh, to, uh, uh, add this support to the Zephyr in a, a, a sample application and to uh, like to have a play around with, uh, with the uh, sensor. And finally, we speak also about uh, some key insights uh, which I explored in our uh, software development cycle for uh, sensor in Zephyr and some uh, key uh, tips and tricks uh, which can be useful for uh, uh, your uh, application development or uh, develop, uh, driver development for sensors in Zephyr. Uh, so, uh, before uh, what uh, before going to uh, going to anything, what technically a sensor is? Uh, so, as a uh, Wikipedia says, sensor is a physical device which senses read the physical world environment or a physical data which can be uh, responded or recorded. The that could potentially be a sensor. So it can either reach a data uh, like a temperature, a humidity, or a pressure, or a acceleration, th uh, those stuffs uh, in terms of uh, reading information from the sensor in the physical world. Or uh, it could provide a technical events like uh, reading uh, more than a threshold limit, something like a pressure limit, which is more than a certain value. More probably we can uh, detect something like uh, methane or carbon emission, which is more than a certain uh, level in a factory or a manufacturing unit or so. So those kind of steps uh, which we can interface with the physical microcontroller platform and observe it. So uh, those are all the part of uh, uh, sensor classification. Uh, so uh, so now we know that uh, what a sensor is. So how do we uh, classify this into a broader category? Sensor can either be an analog sensor or it could be a digital sensor. So analog sensor is a, a outputs an analog signal uh, which will be varying uh, in accordance with time. And then we need to capture the, uh, those signal in an ADC block and analog to digital co uh, converter block in a, micro in a microcontroller and sample it. Uh, and uh, make it as a useful information after sampling at a certain acquisition rate and so on. Where in the digital part of it, uh, we have the values straight away comes, uh, comes from the sensor in a form of a digital values, meaning uh, we can get a temperature value out of it directly from the sensor or a acceleration value directly from the sensor. So technically this information will be a shadow the serial peripheral uh, interface which could be uh, H2C, uh, SPI or a 
சீரி ஏனி சார்ட் ஆஃப் சீரியல் கம்யூனிகேஷன் லைக் கேன்பஸ் ஆர் ஆல்சோ ஈவன் கன்சிடர் இன் டூ இன் டூ திஸ் மேட்டர் அசிட் இட் இஸ் அ சீரியல் இன்டர்ஃபேஸ் ஆல்சோ ஸோ ஸோ தென் வாட் இஸ் பொட்டன்ஷியலி பொட்டன்ஷியல் ரோல் ஆர் வைட்டல் ரோல் த சென்சர் கேன் ப்ளே இன் ஐஓடி டிவைசஸ் ஸோ அண்ட் ஐஓடி டிவைஸ் இன் எனி ஃபார்ம் யூ கேன் திங்க் அபவுட் இஸ் கேப்சரிங் சம் எக்ஸர்ஒய் பேராமீட்டர் ஆர் அ டேட்டா அண்ட் process it or send this information to cloud or the server uh, where we get uh, processes and some extent in the server side and have a data visualization platform in the back end so uh, the da- data are ca- captured and controlled we are using a control logic like a P- pid logic and so on we could also speak about uh, fleet management uh, manufacturing and there could be n number of possibilities in terms of uh, iot devices to use a sensor and make use of its functionality to achieve the end use cases so now uh, that we know what a sensor is and then like now we have to sp- uh, speak about uh, how sensor is uh, laid out in zephyr so people who come from the operating systems like uh, linux or freeautos or embed or any kind of uh, operating system for that matter uh, you might already know uh, w- what a driver model or a device model in one way or another way uh, so like uh, say uh, device model as in the devices will be connected over uh, uh, the bus and uh, then uh, then it uh, like it could be a physical dev- a physical bus and then the li- uh, physical bus is virtually represented back again the software side of it then we have the connection of the devices in the uh, and uh, the uh, like we have a drivers uh, uh, develop uh, de- drivers are compiled at the uh, during the run time of a system uh, whereas in this uh, zephyr case we have the uh, driver uh, devices are uh, made in the uh, compile time also uh, we see some detailed insights uh, insights about uh, how is a zephyr uh, sensor subsystem specifically and uh, how it will be in, uh, interfaced with uh, internal io bus or uh, external io bus uh, which we will see in a moment uh, so also we speak about certain s- sensor subsystem apis which, which will be useful in uh, developing a application or uh, uh, are your own drivers in the upcoming steps so uh, what a driver model uh, or the device model specifically in zephyr is like uh, we have various devices in this uh, particular b- uh, block of a uh, a block over there uh, dev- from uh, device a to device b uh, where the couple of devices device a device b connected to i square c device c and device d connected to spy are uh, everything is connected to a single line of bus and uh, uh, the devices are enumerated and uh, placed over there the from the uh, devices perspective the uh, device is ca- created and then uh, user application is u- uh, Uh, communicate through the f- uh, physical uh, peripheral through this uh, uh, generated devices uh, it, uh, so the whole point about the device model representation is do, uh, is just to showcase share uh, some insights like uh, say there is no no bus for every uh, each and every independent group of platform uh, like uh, like in uh, linux uh. so uh, as a first thing in zephyr uh, how uh, how does a device look like so uh, struct device is almost everything in terms of representing uh, the device as well as the whole operation of a driver as well so uh, we use this uh, struct device everywhere in terms of a, like a driver in terms of a application side for consuming this uh, particular device uh, so struct device is almost everything let's see like uh, when i say a device model which has uh, only one single bus and all these uh, devices are uh, treated as a uh, single device so every device is represented with this particular struct device and what exactly we have within this particular uh, struct device maybe we will go in detail in the following uh, slides but in brief summary we'll have a name for each device uh, and then uh, also configuration instances or uh, configuration details uh, be, which will be uh, like a device specific configuration and also we'll uh, have a data uh, the private data which will be, uh, usually uh, ca- uh, call and uh, like a uh, driver per, uh, private data specifically in uh, any other operating system you can say uh, drivers uh, private data so that would be kept and uh, will be used during the run time of a driver where the configuration part which will be used for the configuration uh, certain aspects uh, let's say in case of uart uh, you control the flow control or the uh, you control uh, baud rate as one dy- dynamically those all comes into the configuration part 
where is the data part uh, where we feed some data from the physical device uh, which is a serial device to get the serial data from the FIFO of the IP block and then uh, get the data out of it. So su such things come under uh, data block of this uh, stuck device. Uh, um, so uh, uh, in some other cases like uh, we, we will need a synchronization mechanism, uh, we'll use uh, some logging mechanism, those uh, initiation, initialization uh, parts are also come into the data part. Uh, and apart from the uh, config part and the data part, there is a one other important thing uh, which is a API, uh, which is the most important thing uh, for any specific drivers in software which will uh, have more details about uh, how the device operate and uh, how do we differentiate one subsystem from another in the uh, later upcoming slides. Okay, so uh, we'll see mo more about the uh, API part in the later uh, upcoming slides. So that is one of the uh, important aspects uh, which I missed is uh, uh, power management. Uh, so uh, in every sensor, uh, uh, nowadays uh, IoT devices, edge devices or uh, uh, node devices, uh, they are probably uh, powered with uh, uh, very low po uh, low power cells like uh, coin cell, three volt cell, and etc. So uh, those things needs to be have a, a power efficient stuff. So in those cases, we need a device power management. So su such things need to be handled specifically in the uh, device specific section. So that's why we have a, a PM device. So uh, anyways, we uh, will have some uh, following exp uh, explanation about power management in the following upcoming slides. So uh, as I said. Uh, like earlier, uh, the device model is generic and uh, uh, super generic in a way, it's represented by a stuck device. So uh, that as I said, uh, stuck device is everything. We deal with this uh, particular stuck device and it is all the uh, device model itself is. Uh, we'll see uh, how it's uh, binding, to, uh, binding together and then how the device is laid out and how the, uh, uh, how the driver and uh, other things are binding together. Uh, but then uh, stuck device is everything as a part of a device uh, so what uh, what, el uh, what else, what more we uh, we have it uh, here? So uh, we have an uh, init level, init sequence of uh, devices, uh, inst uh, inst uh, which are all uh, instance based one. Uh, they are uh, only differ by a level and a priority. Meaning uh, you will have a UART device and then you will have a sensors connected to a UART and then you like, uh, uh, like uh, you will have a uh, I2C, uh, I2C as a bus, then a sensor like a accelerometer, uh, connected to the bus, uh, then I, I2C uh, device must be initialized before the accelerometer sensor itself uh, initialized. So at that moment, uh, unit and level are uh, most uh, important uh, when, when we consider it. Uh, so uh, th there is uh, there's also uh, uh, device API which de defines the nature of a subsystem, uh, which means uh, we do not have a stuck ISO IC, stuck uh, SPI device, or a stuck PCI device, stuck so on, so on, and so forth. Uh, we, don't, we do not have a device, a dedicated device uh, for each and uh, every class of it. We only have uh, devices for all the category, which is a stuck device. Uh, and how do we uh, really differentiate from uh, one device to another? Technically speaking, device API is the only matter, uh, only thing matter uh, with, uh, which uh, differentiates uh, uh, every other subsystem. Uh, like uh, if you take a, a UART subsystem, you will have an uh, UART uh, FIFO read, FIFO write, uh, and so on. Like uh, if you take an I square C subsystem, uh, you'll have a I square C uh, transfer, I square C uh, read and write. Uh, so uh, that's where the devices, uh, like that's where the uh, driver APIs are uh, differentiated. So th that's a, ba a basic differentiation, but each and every subsystem will have its own representation of the API. So uh, if we uh, if we go back to this uh, previous slide, uh, we'll uh, we'll see an uh, const void uh, po pointer API, which meaning it's uh, it's a void a void pointer API, which is a type independent uh, data type uh, where we represent a specific sub a subsystem or each and every subsystem. Uh, so it is not a type specific thing. So on the device, we have a, sub, a subsystem API, which is not specific to any of, uh, 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 which do not subsi uh, specific to any of the uh, uh, peripheral devices. So, uh, uh, but then uh, uh, devices are uh, stored, uh, statically reserved, uh, reserved for every, every device-free node at a compile time. 
meaning uh, every every device objects are uh, uh, coming coming together and the device uh, device tree nodes are uh, uh, put it together at a compile time and later it it can be taken out and uh, used for various purposes in uh, drivers as well as uh, uh, application side of it so uh, so then uh, now that we know uh, what uh, how a device model will look like uh, um, we, we need to know uh, how to define a device driver uh, in an uh, uh, div, uh, define a device in a driver so uh, so how do we do that do that we need uh, which we uh, which we need, uh, so how we can do uh, do that uh, we need to pa uh, use this api and uh, pass the parameters required for, for, for this uh, for those uh, api like uh, inst represents a uh, instance number init function where the uh, d device specific initialization sh uh, initialization uh, should be happening uh, this particular function callback or a uh, function itself will call by the uh, initialization code of a driver or the kernel uh, before uh, uh, it, uh, before it uh, even co comes into the uh, main function, it, it will be uh, uh, done at the uh, kernel runtime. So uh, le uh, let's say uh, if a temperature sensor needs to be initialized, or uh, the set of register needs to be uh, initialized to specific state, and so on. Not assuming this uh, uh, particular sensor uh, is connected, uh, but uh, it is uh, it is connected to uh, SDA, uh, SDA, but it's not connected with the SCL line. So those kind of uh, sanity checks and also initial configuration will ne needs to be done in the in uh, init function of it. So uh, so such functionality implement uh, needs to be implemented in init, init function. Then uh, we have a PM device. I'll I'll come to the PM device later. But uh, and then we have a data pointer which is, uh, which stores a private uh, private data uh, of a device specific thing uh, where uh, like uh, in. Uh, I, in our device will uh, will have uh, so, something like uh, 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 synchronization logs and uh, device specific buffers uh, um, and uh, so the, so many things uh, those uh, 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 definitions of uh, 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 private data should be co come into this uh, uh, data pointer and uh, as i said earlier configuration pointer where the configuration of the devices should be stored and uh, uh, and the references of uh, uh, that uh, device specific configuration check will be uh, passed to that uh, configuration pointer uh, then we'll have a, a level and a priority which are the most uh, important things uh, here uh, like uh, uh, level is something like a grouped for the, uh, the whole uh, Zephyr or something like uh, you'll have a pre kernel one pre kernel two post kernel and uh, application level so these are like a groupings where uh, let, uh, let's say uh, five of the subsystem is grouped under a uh, uh, pre kernel meaning uh, this needs to be done or initialized before the kernel. Let's say uh, timer, uh, clock, uh, and so on needs to be initialized before the scheduler so that the scheduler and other things can uh, function properly. Uh, let's say we need to do uh, I2C spy, which can be uh, initialized under uh, pre kernel 2 level because uh, those subsystems are not like uh, super critical, like a uh, clock or a timer. So that needs to be uh, initialized under uh, pre kernel 2 level. Uh, then comes our uh, drive, uh, sensor driver where. Um, Th those things are uh, happened in a post kernel level uh, which needs uh, uh, those configurations from the pre kernel 1 and the pre kernel 2 levels so uh, we have this multiple levels in zephyr and we have a priority under it so uh, under each of our levels uh, the priority may vary sir. like uh, the, the, the there will be a, a priority for i2c priority we have a spy, a spy priority we have a ur priority and so on like uh, uh, if you want to uh, connect a I2C sensor, then uh, we have to uh, uh, you uh, initialize that uh, I2C uh, subsystem driver before uh, initializing our uh, I2C sensor driver. So uh, th uh, this is how uh, th uh, those uh, pa parameters are passed to this uh, device DT in defined uh, API. Uh, and then the most important thing is a API pointer, which is uh, uh, as I said earlier, uh, this is uh, uh, this is how the uh, every subsystem is uh, differentiating. Uh, like uh, API pointer here um, uh, mentions uh, uh, like uh, if, if we are using a sensor a sensor API, uh, those uh, device specific APIs we uh, created under a sensor driver will be uh, referenced uh, will be given as a reference to this uh, API pointer. Uh, so, uh, what are the things which we can uh, uh, like? We discussed so, uh, so far. Uh, how do we uh, define this uh, particular device as an instance here as a driver? 
So as you can see in this uh, particular code snippet, device DT ins define uh, is the one which needs to be uh, used with all the parameters which we discussed earlier. Mm, where you can uh, say uh, index is like, uh, 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 it's an integer uh, based on, uh, uh, from zero to n minus one, uh, based on the compatibility property we are, we are using and how, ma how many compatibility property we are uh, going to use in our uh, device we node. Uh, and then the uh, uh, device specific uh, unit function, uh, which I show, uh, which will be uh, look like this. Uh, here you can see the device specific init function where the uh, UR devices is uh, get uh, using those uh, pointers and uh, uh, the, uh, there is an API uh, device is ready, uh, which is uh, used for a sanity check like uh, uh, the uh, device, uh, device get function will uh, uh, like uh, here we, uh, we get the uh, you are device by device dt get uh, uh, dt inst uh, bus that uh, uh, that uh, device driver api uh, so this uh, device driver api is uh, going to this uh, init function and the uh, uh, device is ready api is uh, uh, check for the uh, actual device is init or not uh, initialized or not so uh, uh, as i said earlier the those uh, uh, synchronization mechanisms are uh, have to be initialized uh, in the init functions of a, a, a driver. So uh, that also happening in this uh, level. Uh, so uh, then, if you if you are having a, a, a interrupt like uh, like uh, the sensor provides a, uh, the physical sensor provides an interrupt which also uh, uh, needs to be uh, initialized uh, priorly uh, like uh, moving into the application level. So uh, this is how the uh, device uh, device is initialized for this uh, particular sensor. Uh, 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 those compatible name is uh, HC Grow underscore RP zero TA, which is an uh, uh, fingerprint sensor. So this is how uh, we define a device. This uh, this is how the init function of that uh, of this particular device will look like. Uh, uh, and then uh, so uh, coming back to this slide, uh, where you have the yeah. Uh, uh, map file which shows a uh, unit level uh, and uh, you can see the a uh, uh, lot of addresses mentioned and uh, uh, what actually uh, it uh, depicts uh, uh, is uh, like uh, uh, how the resources are initialized and what uh, in what uh, levels the uh, uh, the services uh, the resources are initialized so like uh, if you uh, if you see at the top level of the table uh, you can see uh, esp32 clock and the kernel heap services uh, here, uh, why it is uh, ESP32 is because I uh, used uh, ESP32 as uh, my development environment. So uh, the clock and the he uh, heap services are uh, initialized at the with a maximum priority of uh, uh, 30 under uh, pre kernel one, and then uh, uh, followed by uh, GPIO followed by uh, serial, uh, and then you will see uh, uh, at pre kernel uh, level two uh, there is a, a timer initialized. So uh, uh, this shows that. Uh, uh, clock is in, uh, so only after uh, clock is initialized, a ti timer uh, can be initialized. Then, uh, uh, then coming to, uh, to our, uh, to our uh, uh, device driver, uh, it uh, initialized under a post kernel level with a priority of a 90. So then, uh, uh, the, uh, the next thing is a device. So as I said before, uh, device creation itself like, is like a, a reserv uh, reservation uh, during a, uh, a compile time. Uh, there is uh, no concept of a de device creation on the fly during a runtime based on uh, whatsoever like uh, DVC or uh, whatever. So uh, in Zephyr, we don't crea create devices during runtime. Uh, we we created a, we create device during the compile time as a decision. If you look at the uh, same device mapping files in the uh, Zephyr map uh, I got from the build, uh, you can say uh, see like a group of. Uh, uh, group of items li uh, listed here uh, 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 from the device start uh, to device end you can see uh, at uh, device pre kernel one start uh, there is a device mentioned at uh, device dts odd 27 which is a device uh, initialized uh, which is a device created for a clock and uh, you can see uh, from the uh, f uh, fifth line from the bottom you can see device dts odd 64 where our uh, uh, sensor driver is initialized and uh, it assigned the, with a name device dts odd 64 so uh, this is how the device uh, devices are uh, created and uh, looks like uh, in the map file you can uh, you can see it uh, uh, when you uh, build a sam uh, sample of it so uh, uh, so uh, we define a device in a uh, de uh, using a device API in a device driver. So how do we define a device in a 
a device free node this is how uh, our device will be uh, look like inside a device free node uh, uh, there is a uart node uh, which is a primary node uh, uh, then uh, we are going to connect a sensor uh, which is based on uart uh, which will be con comes into the uh, uart uh, uart main node so uh, you can see as you can see uh, the, uh, there is this uh, node uh, called uh, a node with a label fps and uh, you can see the compatible property you can see the reg property and uh, int gpio property so here uh, you can uh, you, you can look at the compatible property uh, th that's a, uh, that's the main uh, property which uh, which uh, creates a inst instantiation instantiation part of it so uh, this is how uh, the uh, device node uh, will uh, will look like uh, so uh, basically uh, w what uh, what this de uh, device will uh, will be, uh, will happen to this uh, device tree is uh, uh, all the uh, dts and uh, overlay files are uh, converted into uh, zephyr uh, uh, dts in the build time and then the using the yaml file uh, which is a description of the uh, uh, sensor we are going to use uh, uh, with a com uh, with a combination of a yaml file and the dts file we created uh, those are uh, parsed into a uh, gen uh, c headers uh, uh, which will be uh, look like this for uh, for uh, for this particular sensor the uh, the generator c headers will be uh, look like the process is uh, here as in this image and the uh, a c headers which uh, which are uh, which are going to uh, created will be look like this you can find this also inside the build uh, build directory of the uh, of your sample so uh, we can uh, we already see how how we de uh, define a device in a device uh, driver uh, how we define a define a device in a device free node now uh, we go we are going to see uh, how to obtain a device in a application so uh, the, uh, this is a code snippet which shows uh, how we can uh, uh, get a device from uh, uh, from our application so uh, device dt get one which is a uh, major uh, which is an important api used here uh, which uh, which going to uh, uh, give our uh, give the reference uh, give the uh, reference of a struct device uh, which is going to be created for that uh, particular compatible uh, property uh, as i say uh, as you see uh, this uh, this uh, this overlay the compatible properties hc grow r file 0 to a so we are going to get the device through this compatible property uh, with uh, using the uh, api device dt get one so uh, th that is not the uh, um, that is not the only api available to get the device you can uh, see the uh, multiple way, uh, see there are uh, four other multiple ways we can get the devices so uh, instance instantiation for uh, so uh, now we have the device instantiation uh, here in this uh, slide uh, this is how the uh, multiple instantiation will uh, going to happen uh, we, are, we are having a sensor uh, sensor device physical sensor device uh, sensor a and sensor v uh, sensor b which is connected to the one single bus and then uh, the uh, that uh, sensor uh, a and sensor b both are having uh, both are same uh, same sensor and uh, they are uh, having the same peripheral you are uh, so uh, those uh, devices so those physical sensors are only differentiated through the uh, struct device uh, you can see the overlay will be uh, look like this and the from uh, from those overlay the devices are going to be created like this uh, so uh, as i said uh, struct devices everything this is how the uh, devices created and uh, uh, from those uh, device tree overlay so uh, so we have the device instantiation part and uh, uh, all of the things uh, now uh, uh, we uh, we now uh, spoke about uh, how the sensor subsystem uh, in the uh, zephyr is uh, laid out so uh, as i mentioned uh, earlier uh, we do not have a virtual bus or uh, for each and every io peripheral or serial peripheral so uh, wherein uh, i2c uh, the spy and the uart everything is a simple io bus uh, here and which will be directly consumed by the sensor subsystem over there uh, uh, that being uh, like own exception uh, which i can compare right now here is this uh, like uh, the, uh, there is no bus meaning uh, probably the sensor itself is connected to the uh, uh, soc itself certain cases like uh, nordic and where you have a temperature sensor which is connected directly to the cpu bus uh, which is uh, a export uh, exposing a set of uh, register to read a temperature value from it so uh, that's how a sensor on a soc ip uh, will, will look like and the, uh, those uh, uh, peripherals are connected to that uh, uh, io bus so uh, 
so uh, but from the uh, per perspective of a sapphire like uh, uh, i uh, i2c master are in the slave will be uh, connected externally so uh, so a spy master that uh, slave will be connected externally so such, uh, such things will be handled by the i2c subsystem spy subsystem uart subsystem uh, uh, respectively so uh, a page uh, uh, so the the peripherals are uh, communicated uh, uh, th those uh, actual physical peripherals are uh, uh, com communicated uh, to the sensor subsystem uh, through this uh, uh, respective uh, individual subsystem like i2c subsystem spy subsystem and the uart subsystem the uh, the actual sensor going to uh, get the data from the uh, higher level device driver api given out from the sensor uh, subsystem uh, and uh, there is an optional layer called uh, external sensor sdk uh, as we can see, um, uh, there is an option, uh, uh, there is a uh, probability like uh, uh, wood electronic uh, having this uh, external sensor SDK uh, where the, all the uh, 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 data getting from the sensor readings uh, are, uh, go, uh, are happening at the uh, code level in the external SDK. Uh, so we are going to exp uh, export that uh, external SDK in, uh, into the software as a module and then uh, we are going to uh, uh, use that uh, external SDK for uh, ge getting the data through this uh, uh, peripheral subsystem APIs and the sensor sub subsystem APIs. So uh, th that's how we, we, we can uh, import the external uh, uh, SDKs into the uh, into uh, software. So uh, this this is uh, this is a overall view uh, the sensor subsystem and uh, Zephyr looks like. So. Uh, uh, then uh, now uh, coming to the sensor subsystem, um, like uh, in Zephyr, uh, it provides uh, a various operations like uh, mm, sensor sample fetch, channel get, attribute get. Uh, these are the APIs provided by the uh, Zephyr for a sensor subsystem. Uh, th these are classified into basic two operations, like uh, reading a sensor data, uh, like. Uh, when we uh, when we are going to re uh, read a sensor data, uh, we are going to uh, use those uh, uh, respective APIs. And uh, for asynchronous callback or uh, like uh, say uh, when you are having a uh, interrupts, uh, like uh, you need a data on a, uh, on getting a particular inter interrupt. So uh, there comes our uh, another API called uh, sensor trigger set. Uh, so these are the APIs provided by the Zephyr for a sensor subsystem. Uh, and so uh, let's see, uh, speak uh, each and every API individually. So uh, that's how uh, we need to implement uh, uh, this for our uh, own sensor. So uh, we, uh, what is a sample fetch? Ba basically, a sample fetch uh, needs to be implemented on a sensor uh, to fetch all the channels or data from all the um, all the channels. So uh, what is basically a channel? Uh, channel is like uh, if you have an IMU sensor which is providing a uh, gyro, axero, uh, and other things like uh, velocity uh, uh, and so on. Uh, and every parameter uh, is considered to be a, a channel. Let's say accelerometer, mm, it's having an x, y, and z axis. So uh, those x, y, and z axis are considered as a channel. So uh, this is how the cha channel in a, uh, sensor. Uh, a sensor is uh, classified. So uh, a sensor can have a uh, multiple channels. For example, if you take a BMP 288, uh, 280, which is a sensor which measure uh, pressure, ambient temperature, and uh, humidity. Those pressure, ambient temperature, and humidity are the sensor channels. Uh, from those, we, we will get uh, get an uh, data uh, from the uh, sensor uh, to our de device driver. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, device uh, driver have an uh, device private data. Where will, uh, uh, that's where the channels, are, that's where the sensor readings are going to be stored. So uh, then with the channel get API, we are going to uh, get, get those uh, fetched uh, data from the device driver private data to our uh, uh, actual application through this uh, channel get API. Uh, attributes uh, attributes are uh, nothing but like uh, uh, if you have an accelerometer, you would like to have a threshold. Let's say if you uh, if the threshold reaches more than uh, 100 g, uh, then you have an uh, like uh, 20 g or 100 g. Like uh, you need to have an alert or an um, or even an event uh, which will be uh, triggered. So for such configuration need to be set. Uh, we we will be having an uh, attributes. So. Uh, that's where the attributes come in, uh, comes into the place. So uh, sampling frequency, uh, uh, those things can be set accordingly uh, uh, 
uh, in in the uh, attributes and uh, that uh, get the uh, get uh, get the attributes data from the application user perspective. So uh, and then the final part is a, a trigger, which is a, a event, or you can say a, a interrupt physically underlying. So uh, when we set a threshold, how does a device speak back to us? So uh, that's about the callback functionality you can uh, uh, register with and then you have an uh, interrupt fired then you have uh, then you will be handling the interrupt accordingly uh, let's say if you can uh, acquire a data uh, with a fifo or so on mm, uh, th that's it like a uh, data acquisition the whole thing can happen here and uh, also that uh, just an event uh, it could be ju uh, just like a fall detection or a double tap detection uh, those are the, uh, just like an uh, events uh, can be for uh, that uh, events can be forwarded to the appli application side mm. so make sure that the uh, one thing is common across uh, any operating system like uh, uh, for this matter uh, you do not you do not sleep on an uh, interrupt handler so uh, you do uh, you do not need a large set of operation under a interrupt handler so uh, uh, these things are uh, these things can be offloaded uh, using the Zephyr API. Uh, like uh, we, uh, Zephyr have, ha has an uh, work queue. Uh, uh, so uh, th uh, those uh, interrupt ha handling pods can be submitted to the uh, other thread. Uh, so uh, th these are the APIs pro uh, provided uh, by uh, provided for the sensor in Zephyr. So uh, these are the channels uh, and the, the, uh, these are the sensor attributes which are already presented at the uh, Zephyr uh, for various uh, devices. Uh, like uh, for, uh, as I said, accelerometer having the channel sensor channel axle X. Uh, like uh, as I said, uh, sensor attribute has a sensor attribute uh, lower threshold, upper threshold. So these are the uh, sensor channels and the sensor attributes available at the uh, Zephyr. So. Uh, uh, again, uh, these are the sensor triggers uh, available at the uh, Zephyr for uh, user to co communicate with the uh, uh, actual sensor. So, uh, so now uh, that we spoke about a uh, uh, whole part of uh, like uh, how uh, how the sensor subsystem is, uh, how uh, uh, the APIs are arranged in a uh, 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 Zephyr. So uh, now uh, we can move into how to add a sensor in a Zephyr. So uh, compatibility, the first thing. Uh, so this is the most important thing, uh, most common thing. Let's say if you have a uh, pickle driver, uh, I mean, uh, I'm speaking about a, a sensor driver, uh, like any form of driver. If you can, uh, if you have a driver called a pickle, uh, then like uh, it could be a PCA uh, 96 or whatsoever. Um, but then uh, you already have a, a PCA 95 double X support in a, a Zephyr. Uh, uh, then uh, you, you have to add up to uh, to the existing driver. Uh, so uh, the, these are the possibilities uh, you can uh, add a uh, uh, sensor support in a, a Zephyr. Um, uh, if if a sensor have an, uh, multiple uh, serial interfaces like uh, uh, I2C or uh, SPI, they, they can be uh, offloaded in a, se a separate way and the co a common uh, sensor getting parameters are uh, put into the sensor driver. So uh, th these, are, uh, th uh, these are the ways you can add a, uh, s a sensor in, in Zephyr. So uh, in addition to the driver, uh, you can add a uh, device fee or a shield uh, to, 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 uh, contribute to, uh, to contribute to the Zephyr. So uh, when, when, we, when, we are, uh, when you are going to develop a driver, you, you have to uh, 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 best practice is to have a sample and a test cases so that uh, Zephyr is going to, uh, uh, other people are going to use it and Zephyr uh, CA is uh, ha having no issues with it. Uh, so uh, this is how you can uh, add a device in uh, uh, Zephyr. So a uh, few uh, uh, tips and tricks are uh, I, uh, I learned uh, my uh, own driver about it. Uh, so. Uh, Always prefer uh, even based uh, uh, even based application over uh, po polling. Like if uh, if you are having a uh, sensor with a uh, uh, interrupt property, use a uh, event uh, other than polling and uh, avoid mem mem copy in uh, uh, within the driver in uh, all possible ways. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, as you can see, these are the uh, tips and tricks I have uh, used uh, uh, on uh, uh, developing my uh, sensor. Uh, then uh, save. Uh, 
So, uh, what's here about uh, Save Nature? Uh, since I'm providing a specific uh, power, manage power management API, uh, this is uh, this is a, a state diagram of a power management uh, API which can provide from the uh, uh, Zephyr. So, uh, Zephyr provides actually uh, two uh, power, man power management activities like. Uh, uh, system power management and uh, device power management. We are going to use uh, device power management in the uh, sensor use cases where uh, uh, device runtime power management can be handled from the user application like uh, when to uh, uh, put the uh, sensor into sleep or uh, when to put the uh, state back the sensor into the active state. So the, the, this can be uh, done with the uh, uh, power management API power with the uh, uh, sensor. So, uh, so uh, these are the ways uh, sensor interfacing with uh, IoT devices. Um, so nowadays, uh, battery operated edge, edge nodes are, uh, uh, are are more common in uh, usage. Uh, so so sensors are have to be in a uh, uh, low power mode and uh, uh, active samplings are uh, uh, need to be happen with the uh, microcontrollers uh, microcontroller activities. So uh, these are the references I have taken. Uh, so um, there are a lot of uh, things mentioned from um, earlier in the de uh, Zephyr Developer Summit and the uh, ELC pr pr presentation. So thank you.